Hello guys, welcome to another video. At some point of our lives as developers, we have to deal with concurrency at some point. Concurrency is one of the most interesting things in computer science, but also one of the most complicated to understand. And of course, implementing concurrency, it's hard to maintain and debug. In Swift, we have many ways to deal with concurrency issues, but we still to require a lot of intuition to detect where is that potential bug. However, that will change forever with the usage of actors. Let's explore today how they work and how now building concurrency code, it's safer. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Teams. All right, before starting, let's refresh the concept of concurrency. Concurrency is the action of running and managing multiple tasks at the same time. But there's no guarantee that all the tasks will run at the same time. This is done by the usage of threads. It's not the same like parallelism, which is running many tasks simultaneously at the same time. This will depend on the amount of processors you have in your system. The interesting is that you can mix both concepts in a system, for example, in iOS or macOS. However, deciding when, how, or where that will happen, it's managed by the system automatically. In another hand, we have synchronous versus asynchronous. The difference is simpler, but really important too. A synchronous operation will wait until finish its current task to do anything else. An asynchronous operation can start work and if the system requires to wait for that operation, then it can suspend it and do other work in the meantime. By the way, you can see more about it in the async await video that is in the description. Okay, now that we have those concepts in mind, let's start with the demo. All right, let me show you this application that I built during the week. It's basically a simulator of a chat and you can send any message you want. Hello. You can press here and boom, the message is sent. However, that's not the interesting part. The cool thing is that with this demo, we can simulate a conversation in a chat with multiple persons at the same time. Actually, when we started the app, we just load a couple of messages, but we can load more over and over to see, you know, a fluid conversation in this chat. However, before that, let me show you the code just to give you the idea about what's inside. First, we have this conversation view, which is this area. We have the chat field, which is this one. And the interesting part here is that we have a group chat view model. When the view is appearing, we are generating the messages. It's basically the same operation that we are executing when we press this load button. Okay, so let's see what's inside of generate messages. Well, this generate message function is just calling this store new message function. And here inside, we are getting a message, a new message every time we found it. And we are adding this new message to the conversation here in the main thread, of course. Let's explore the code just for a moment. Yeah, we have a chat message, which is just what you are seeing here is the object that is rendering the screen and the rest, we will see it in a moment. Now, let's see how we are getting those messages. Let's go here to new message. And here we have message store. This new message function is calling this network messenger singleton and we are fetching the messages. The only operation here we are doing is just saving the history of all message available so far. And we are triggering this completion to group chat view more. That's all. So now let's see what is actually this network messenger. Here we are. This is the class that it's simulating a real API connection or a web socket, whatever you want. And here we are fetching the messages. The two interesting things here is, first, we are using a dispatch queue concurrent perform. What this is doing is that we can execute concurrent tasks. And 
that number of tasks is provided by this parameter that in this case is a random number of messages. So in other words, we are generating a random number of messages and those messages will run concurrently in our application. And then each of them will report to the caller by this completion handler. And then will bring us the real behavior of having a conversation. Everything looks okay with this code, right? So, okay, let's actually run it and see what happens. Okay, everything works well. We got four messages. Let's see if we could add more here. And oopsie, yeah, we got this issue. Execution bad access. Yeah, this was expected, unfortunately. And this is really complicated to figure it out. I mean, if you are new in iOS and you just saw this message and you try to Google it or, or look in, in Stack Overflow, you will see a lot of answers because this is not a descriptive error. What is happening here is that multiple threads wants to access the same resource at the same time. We don't know exactly how many, but as you can see, we have 10 messages. So maybe two, three or more threads wants to insert in this message history. This kind of problems is really complicated to debug because as you can see, we run it at the first time without any issue, but then we got the issue. So yeah, it's unpredictable. And those kind of things are known as data races. When two threads or operations wants to insert or do something with a resource at the same time, that will happen. The best thing could happen is this, a crash. The worst thing is not crashing and having unpredictable things or inconsistent states. That's why this kind of box are really complicated to reproduce and fix. Okay, how can we solve this? In Swift, we have many ways to solve this issue. We can do using dispatch queues, we can use logs, we can use barriers, etc. For this example, let's use a private queue and send those operations into a synchronous queue. Okay, we have our queue ready. So the only thing we need to do is inserting this code inside of the queue. We're going to use this sync method to synchronize our code and wait for this operation before continue with the other operations. Okay, let's run this. Here we are. Let's press load again. And it's working. Pretty nice. This is expected. Amazing. Yeah, we solved the issue. So no matter if our network manager is doing something concurrent and we are receiving many messages at the same time, well, we are synchronizing our code with this technique. Okay, that's cool. However, it's the only problem available. I mean, are you sure that this is the only concurrent problem that we could have? Or are there other potential issues around? It's hard to actually answer that because, well, it will depend on your intuition or, you know, the experience working with concurrent issues. But remember, we are humans and we can forget or bypass any issue without noticing and then become a much bigger problem later. But fortunately, that's the issue that actors help to solve. Actors is a new type in Swift that help you to protect your mutable data against data races or other concurrency issues. Actors are reference types, like classes. In fact, they are pretty similar with one big difference. Actors don't support inheritance. Okay, how can we implement actors in our code? First, let's remove the queue demo here. So in this example, we want to protect message history. Let's convert then this class message store in actor. When we decorate or type with actor, internally, we are conforming a protocol called actor and we are preparing a series of tasks to be in queue if it's required for this particular actor type. You can read more about it and how actors are implemented in C++. I'll leave in the description a link to an article uh, written by 
Bruno Rocha. It's really interesting. Now, after this point, we will have to do a little refactor. One of the great benefits of actors is that we can see at compilation time potential issues with or mutable variables. This is awesome and this is unique for actors. In the past, there's no way to figure that out right away before running your code. That's a great addition for Swift indeed. You can see actors as boxing your type. In this case, this actor is boxing your message store and protects and throwing errors at compilation times against any possibility of modification of your mutable states. That means you can see right away those potential issues in your code since the beginning. Okay, so let's start with the refactor. The first thing we have to notice is that everything that is inside of the actor or using self, it's free to use whatever thing in the actor. So for example, if we have anything that is modifying our message history right away in the actor using self, it's free to use it. Like for example, here we are using this history method and we don't have any issue. However, this network manager is using a closure and in this closure we are accessing self, which is the actor, and we want to modify message history. That's not allowed. And this is a concept called actor isolation. In other words, means actor isolation is protecting your data, like I said before, against any modification outside of the actor. So, okay, this is not possible. The only way to access this message history is by creating a dedicated method. So let's do it. And then here we can access our message history without any issue. Now let's replace this statement with our state message method. However, we're still having an issue. The problem is that we cannot execute anything outside of the actor synchronously. That means this operation save messages needs to be awaitable and needs to be asynchronous to be executed. This method per se, it's not required to be asynchronous because it's inside of the actor. However, we have to then mark these save messages with await. And the reason it's because well, the system then will protect your data, but at some point we will access then your data. It's like the example we saw before with queues, but in this case, we create a suspension point, and then when your data is ready to be accessible, then the thread will do it. It's so simple. Now, the problem is that this closure, it's not marked as a sync. And as you remember in our previous video with async and wait, you cannot run asynchronous code in a synchronous context. To fix that, in this example, we can use task. With task, we can execute or transform this code into an asynchronous work inside of this synchronous operation. It's a great way just to convert legacy code into the new fifth concurrency format. Okay, let's run this. It's working finally, great. Now, just take a look at this code. Here, we are implementing two protocols. This one is not having any issue because this protocol is containing a static method. So in other words, we are not accessing self or the actor itself. That means it's free to use it. And even better, we are just using immutable data. If we go back, this ID is marked as let, it's immutable, so there's no data race here. However, in this hashable protocol, we have an issue. As I said before, this function needs to be asynchronous if we want to execute it outside of the actor. Let's mark it as async. But the problem is that we are breaking the protocol, we're breaking the definition. For cases like this, we have something called non-isolated. Non-isolated is literally saying to the actor, hey, please don't worry about this method. This method is literally be excluded from the actor, regardless of being implemented in the actor. However, you cannot use anything that is mutable inside of your non-isolated method. For this case, instead of using message history to do the hash, let's use ID. ID is immutable and we are good to go. However, we also have in this case to mark hash value to be non-isolated too. There you go. We are good to go with this actor definition. Now let's refactor the rest of the code. 
Okay, here we have a method to retrieve all the history. But again, this method is accessing message history and it's protected now. We cannot use it. So let's go to the store to see what we can do. Here in the store, we have a history method. So let's use it. Now, this code needs to be asynchronous. So we need to convert this function into an asynchronous function and mark this as a wait. Nice. Okay, now we have more issues here, but again, this time related to be asynchronous because the actors requires to execute all the methods in an asynchronous context. So to fix that, let's go to a new message and then mark this to be async. Now, we need to use await in this new message method. And again, we will have to use an async operation for generated messages. So we need to mark it as async. Very nice. So, okay, so looks like everything is fine here, finally. Now let's go to the view. Now here the things are really easy to fix. For an appear, instead of using this modifier, we have to change it for task modifier works in the same way like on a peer but for asynchronous code you can see more in the previous video about what's new in swift ui 3.0 by the way okay so let's mark it as a wait and now for action we don't have support for asynchronous operation but let's use task again to wrap this operation and mark this generate message as a wait Nice, so looks like everything is fine now. Let's run the code. Oh, there you go. The first loading is working as expected. Let's see now if we can load more asynchronous messages. Yeah, it's working. As you can see, yeah, we are generating more conversation here and we don't have any concurrency issue, finally. And the best thing is that we are using actors to also prevent other potential issues in our code at compilation time. Isn't that awesome? One more thing before leaving. Please don't use actors everywhere. It's like using optionals around all your code because you think it's a safer way to code in Swift. But to be honest, no, it will be so painful to work in that code. It's the same with actors. If you start using it everywhere, well, you will have to maintain a lot of code and you will be so restricted about the access of each piece of code. So no, instead of that, just try to analyze if you are requiring that in your concurrent process, because maybe you don't have any kind of concurrent issue. So yeah, just think about it. Also, be careful about actor reentrancy, which is basically what is happening after the suspension point is back or in other words, after the await process. It's important that you should not make any assumption because remember, actors are a great addition, but they are not receivable. I would recommend you to watch the .dc21 session about actors because in that session, they explain a lot about actor reentrancy and why it is so important to be aware of that. So that's it for this video. What do you think about actors? Do you think it's a great addition for Swift? please let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and share with your folks this video if it was useful for you. That's it for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.